welcome to T Watches a Scary Movie. I, of course, am T, and we are talking scary movies. I appreciate you tuning in. Remember, new episodes of the show go up every Wednesday night at 8.30 p.m. Mountain Standard Time. And because I throw out extra content during the week as well, the best way to stay up to date about all the other reviews I'm doing, new tech talk videos, letterbox written reviews, anything that I'm talking about is to get subscribed to my link tree, which is linktr.ee slash T scary movie. If you get subscribed, that'll give you access to the YouTube page or the video version of the show. It'll give you access to all your podcasting platforms, find your audio only versions as well. You can get to my link, uh, excuse me, to my TikTok, to my letterbox, all the stuff where I'm talking all the good news and horror today. So what do I have for y'all tonight? Uh, we are not going to be doing questions for points to get you a free copy of Thanksgiving because we're only doing that on the Wednesday show. So if you want to earn more points to get a chance to win a free copy of Eli Roth's Thanksgiving, make sure you're back here Wednesday night to get two new questions to earn a couple of more points for that. But tonight, I am going to be talking the 1986 sci-fi horror classic, Critters. I have not seen this film in 30 years, folks, and legitimately 30 years at this point. And so this might as well be new for me. And a friend of mine suggested that he really wanted me to check all of these out. So I said, what the hell? We're going to jump right into it. And... Y'all, I'm going to have to check these sequels out because this first movie was a blast. An absolute blast. The story of this is very, very simple. A group of dangerous aliens known as Krites are being transported to a prison on an asteroid. And they end up somehow breaking loose, hijacking a ship, and they end up on the planet Earth. Now, a couple of bounty hunters named Ugg and Lee... That's pretty good. Uh, are also sent to Earth to recapture the Krites, or as they're known in a better way, critters, and bring them back before they can wreak havoc upon our planet. And that's it, folks. It's very, very simple from there. Now, I, for one, absolutely remembered Critters a lot differently. And I don't know if I'm thinking of maybe Ghoulies. I don't know if I'm getting like Leprechaun in the back of my mind or whatever. But I definitely thought that like everything that happens in this movie happened a lot sooner than it did. And that's not a bad thing and the least bit at all. The movie's only 85 minutes long, you know, less than an hour and a half. But the Critters don't actually show up and start interacting with humans, i.e., you know, trying to kill them, until 40 minutes into the film, leaving only another. 40 minutes to where we actually get to interact with them again i'm not saying that as a negative because the first 40 minutes actually spends a lot of time getting us endeared to the brown family as well as introducing us to the bounty hunters as well too and what's kind of crazy about critters is that there's a pretty great cast to it i say crazy but it's just if you look at the names in this this film could legitimately be looked at as a bit of like an all-star film of who's in there especially in the world of horror uh d wallace who we all all know from what Cujo, E.T., uh, The Howling, wherever you want to go to there. D. Wallace stars as Helen Brown, the mother of the Brown family. You have Billy Green Bush as Jay Brown, the father of the Brown family, who you might know from Jason Goes to Hell, where he played Sheriff Ed Landis. That is, uh, he ended up being Jason in that film, actually. Or did he get killed? I have to go back and watch that now again because I love Jason Goes to Hell. And now I can't remember if I'm thinking of the right cop here in this case. But he was also in The Hitcher. He was in The Incredible Hulk. He's done so many different film roles as well too. But what kind of caught me off guard here was that our actual lead character in this film, uh, Brad, the son of the uh, the Brown family, is played by Scott Grimes, who you might know most recently playing the dad in the TED TV show. He plays John's dad. And you might know him from American dad where he plays steve the orville a lot of great stuff and i didn't realize that i've been watching a lot of scott grimes stuff lately this guy is fantastic and the thing is that i've seen compared from like american dad to the orville i've gotten a chance to see his more dramatic side in live action and just seeing him as a kid it's like man this dude, there's a reason why this guy has been around for such a long time in Hollywood. And he might not be getting all these gigantic roles, but that man is the absolute 
absolute like essential player that you need to have in your production if you're looking to get your point across a little bit of humor but it can be turned across on the dime to get you something serious now of course i'm saying this well he's playing a uh, role of a kid in this one here obviously but it doesn't change the fact that scott grimes is awesome but not only that the fact that this film has lynn shay corey burden and Billy freaking Zane in the movie as well, too. Billy Zane was in Critters, which I did not know at all. Now, in terms of scares, honestly, there's, there's not much here. I think that back in the late 80s when this came out, creature features were still a bit of the rage at that point. So there may be a few jump scares if you got a chance to catch this in theaters or in VHS back when it was coming out. It is actually like a little bit on the bloodier side. Like these critters have razor shark teeth and they go to town on a number of the residents that uh, they come and attack here once they get to Earth as well, too. So you're going to get plenty of blood in this one for sure. And it actually doubles like... Like a fun action film and I said it earlier but I found a lot of similarities like with this film to ones like Leprechaun and actually of all movies Suburban Commando was one that I found a lot of similarities with this as well too. You've seen Suburban Commando with that piece of crap Hulk Hogan in it to where uh, the guy is a bounty hunter or is he a cop? I don't remember. It's been a while since I've watched it. it was my favorite as a kid but he comes to earth hunting an alien right if i'm correct and then uh yeah the alien cuts his hand off comes this like giant lizard and everything either way if you watch suburban commando for some reason just feels like very reminiscent of critter so it wouldn't shock me what fascinated me the most about this was the director and co-writer of the film stephen herrick because stephen herrick if you go back and look at his filmography he did bill and ted's excellent adventure he did don't tell mom the babysitter's dead he did the mighty ducks he did the awesome 90s three musketeers movie with chris o'donnell and Kiefer sutherland he did the live action 101 dalmatians the man did rock star he has done like some really really good movies and not only that he did the dead the dead like me tv film that came out as well too stephen herrick is an amazing director and one thing he's really really good at is capturing the signs of the time uh like it really feels every time you go and watch like one of his films that you're living in that time period and i get it if you make a film back then of course it feels that way but i don't know a better way to explain it if you go and watch this dude's movies you have a great time like feeling all the nostalgia coming from it that said, in regards to Critters here, y'all, we're not looking for a lot of deep lore at all. I think it's hilarious that one of the bounty hunters reminds me so much of Tim Curry. Uh, you know the one I'm talking about that does the, was the power of the night and he's singing the song and they just play it over and over and over and over. Seriously, that song gets played so much throughout the movie. That dude who the bounty hunter takes his shape, I'd be shocked if it wasn't based somewhat off of uh, Tim Curry. That dude is such a legend because for those of y'all that didn't know, Tim Curry had actually a very decent music career before he really started making it big as an actor. And he released a few CDs. Go watch Critters again. Tell me I'm crazy that that bounty hunter does not look like Tim Curry. Okay, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Either way though, Critters is a load of fun if you like those late 80s, early 90s creature flicks that aren't too serious. And not only that, the fact that it's a family atmosphere, it's not focused just on mom, just on dad, or the older sister and little brother at all. All four members of the family get a chance to shine. They all get fully fleshed out as characters. It makes this movie a little bit of an anomaly when it comes to other horror films that are kind of the same way that features families that we usually focus on, like the brother and the sister, or the mom, or the dad. So I thought it was really cool that all the family got represented pretty well in this. So. You go check it out for yourself, folks. Let me know how you're feeling about it in the comment section. This one's a classic for sure. Now I gotta work myself through the sequel. So I'll be back to talk about more critters here in the future, but that's gonna do it for me here right now. Folks, make sure to go check out the channel. I got reviews up for Destroy All Neighbors, for Night Swim. I talked about some of the hidden gems we missed in 2023. And next week, I'm gonna be talking The Passenger and I'm going all in on Buffy the Vampire Slayer season five. So hit that subscribe button so you can come back and check out more. Folks, that's it though. My name is T. We've been talking scary movies. Stay scared. Hey everybody, looking for a great way to stay up to date on horror news as well as read the best of articles on anything scary out in the world right now? Then 
you need to head over to the Fangoria shop and get yourself a subscription. If you go to shop.fangoria.com slash AXDW, you can use my own personalized 20% discount to save 20% off on Fangoria Magazine subscriptions, as well as 20% off any other items in their fantastic shop. This is a great deal. If you've ever been wanting to get yourself a subscription, now is the time to do so. Head to shop.fangoria.com slash AXDEW.